brief if I can, but I doubt very seriously. Because this is the serious stuff that we got to deal with. I've been watching since Gavin Cato, even though not a police, even though not a police brutality case, Yusuf Hawkins and some other folks. And then it landed in my backyard. Now they got a problem to deal with. Because I already had the marshal shoot on the forehand. My family, remember, Alberta School is the only case that we can find that the police department, as well as the mayor, took responsibility for. I think they owe a whole lot more apologies than just one. The numbers don't add up to me.
Shelley Frey. We'll be joined by Rachel Gilmore, Gilman, and Delaney Powerful from Black Youth Project on History. Shelly was the eldest of her siblings, her father Shelton's namesake. From the start, Shelly was a people person. Her dream was to open up beauty salons that served as one-stop shops, everything you needed from head to toe. She loved making women feel beautiful and good about themselves. Her calling was helping others. She was a loving mother of two young girls, Chastity and Cheris, the eldest of which takes after her mother's unique fashion sense. More than anything else, Shelly was utterly devoted to her family. On December 6, 2012, Shelly and two other women were in a Walmart. The security guard, an off-duty Houston police officer, approached them after someone reported that they had seen one of the other girls stuff something into their purse. The officer followed them out to their car, when he attempted to prevent the driver from getting into the driver's seat. Instead of shooting at the tires, he fired his gun into the vehicle, full of five unarmed people, two of which were children. He missed the driver and hit Shelly, who was sitting in the passenger seat, in the head and the neck. When the police came, they apprehended the driver, but they ignored Shelly's request for medical attention. Shelly sat in that car, waiting for paramedics for over eight hours. She did not have to die. Shelly wasn't just my daughter, she was my friend. She left behind two beautiful girls. One with Chef Sickle She left behind two sisters. A niece that was supposed to be born in January, and we was excited about the baby coming. The baby didn't get to see her auntie. What I'm looking for is justice. We have to come together and we have to stand for the black living today. We have to not just let them sweep it under the rug. You heard about Shelly maybe a week and after that week you didn't hear any more about it. And I'm thankful to God for the African organization coming together and contacted me to come out to be a part, to be a blessing and help somebody else that's going through what we are going through, that we can help them not to make the same mistakes. That God would also deal with the law enforcement. Lord, that they would be equipped to know how to handle different situations and not be quick to pull a trigger. Because they let them tell it they always fear for their life. Why did you take that job? Woo. If you didn't have a heart for the people, why would you take that job? It's about money. It's about getting paid. It's about being seen. It's not about that because we lost all our family members. And I always wanted to ask them, how would it feel if the shoe was on the other foot? How would you handle it? You would feel the same way we're feeling today. Hurt. You mean? 
upcoming Tuesday. Chantal was a loving and respectable young woman who loved life and enjoyed her own to the fullest. She had a smile as bright as a day and, as, and a warm embrace. Chantal adored animals, loved cooking, and was a missionary. During the first 17 years of her life, Chantal devoted, devoted her Sundays to the thriving temple of God in Christ attended Sunday school, became the church Sunday school secretary, and joined the Thriving Temple's junior choir. She cared for the elderly, sick, and disabled. She had strength of character, came from a loving family, and was kind-hearted. She was generous and had an enormous heart. That was the kind of person Chantal was. Chantal was a beautiful woman with a great promise. On June 14, 2012, Chantal Davis, a 23-year-old African-American woman, was brutally shot and killed by narcotics detective Philip Atkins. Chantal's untimely death has become a call to life for our community. Through her ending is a new beginning. In Chantel's name, we have begun a struggle, one that aims to indict Detective Philip Ankins and expose the racist brutality of the New York City Police Department. Enough is enough. We will bring true justice for Chantel, her family, our community, and all those who continuously suffer such tragedies. This will be Chantel's true legacy. Like I said, I'm Natasha. Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell my sister's story. Um, three years ago, my sister was in a car accident on East 38th and Church Avenue, a busy street in my neighborhood in Brooklyn. Airbags deployed. She was told to get out of the car. Airbags are deployed. How can she get out of the car? Detective Atkins reaches into the car to pull her out with his gun drawn. His gun discharges. Detective Atkins never told us this. This is what was told to the media. His gun discharged. If his gun discharged, that means this was an accident. Why are you trying to pull my sister out of a deployed a vehicle that has deployed airbags that can't move and your gun discharged. After she was shot in her chest, he pulled her out of the vehicle where she collapsed on the floor and bled out onto the street. June 14th, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, bright sunny day, my sister was left on the street to bleed, begging for her life, saying she didn't want to die and was told to shut the fuck up. She was told to shut the fuck up when she said she didn't want to die. 
My sister went to King's County Hospital. Same hospital she was born in, same hospital she died. She went as a Jane Doe. Six hours later is when we were notified that my sister was in the morgue. At this time, they wouldn't let us hear. We had to wait the following day. Three years later, and we still have no answers. But we continue to fight. Off, my family became overnight activists, and we hit the street because immediately my sister was known as some mastermind criminal. She, she, she went to jail. She, she was never convicted of any crimes, but she went to jail. The real criminal is Detective Backus, who had six criminal lawsuits. Four, four, which the city already paid out. Your tax paying dollars, $225,000 the city paid for his civil lawsuits. He's the criminal, not Chantel. That same day, the police took vid all the video cameras from all the stores. They took people's cell phones who were videotaping what happened, and we haven't seen not one thing. But I want to continue to fight because they've been connecting us city by city, state by state, borough by borough, country by country, and we're going to continue to fight. All right. Yes. Next week, Tuesday, is Chantel's 26th birthday, and we'll be going to the, to the cemetery in Jersey to visit with her. She lived three weeks, she lived three weeks into her 23rd birthday. On June 14th, this year at 7.30, we're going to have a memorial because we want to let them know that we did not forget, and I'm not going to forget, and I'm not going to stop until I get some answers. No justice. No peace. No racist. Police. Who will hold Chantel Davis? We will. We elevate Tanisha Anderson, daughter, mother, sister, aunt. Tanisha was a go-getter and an ambitious woman who loved to learn from her youth. She excelled in English and math and was pursuing a degree in journalism at University of Cleveland. She dreamed of being a newscaster. She was the middle child nicknamed Needy and the proud mother of her teenage daughter. She loved to eat, though seldom found cooking. <laughs> Instead, she would hand out sweets, one of her favorites, to all her nieces and nephews. She loved to watch sports, primarily basketball, which she also loved to play. Although Tanisha had been previously diagnosed as bipolar, she was extremely high-functioning and was committed to taking her medication and did. Her mental illness was an, one aspect of her life, but it did not define her life. That day in November, her family called for backup and support because Tanisha was having a rough day. She was not violent. When the police arrived, they separated and isolated her from her family and forced her into a confined area. She understandably panicked and became confused when they tried to force her into a police car. 
the excessive and unnecessary force enacted by the police officers directly caused her death, which has been ruled a homicide. First, I'm overwhelmed and moved by the love the support in this place. I thank you for all showing that, because that's what we need. That's what the families need. So I thank you. Tanisha was a wonderful mom. She was very close to her family and very close to me and her daughter. Her name is Mom Young. So we fight for her today. What happened to my daughter was unjust. It was unjust. It was really unjust. We, I've been through all the range of emotions that I can go through concerning this, but I will not stop as all the rest of the mothers are saying until I get some answers. So, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. Who will hold Tanisha Anderson? We will. Who will hold Tanisha Anderson? We will. Who will hold Tanisha Anderson? We will. Say her name. Say her name. Denisha Anderson. Say her name. Denisha Anderson. We will not forget. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Please show love to all these families right now. Oh, 
Peas, peas, okay. Ancestor Niza Morris, rest in power. Ancestor Tariqa Wilson, rest in power. Ancestor Ayana Jones, rest in power. Ancestor Taisha Miller, rest in power. Ancestor Miriam Carey, rest in power. Ancestor Sharice Francis, rest in power. Ancestor Yvette Smith, rest in power. Ancestor Rakia Boyd, rest in power. Ancestor Chantel Davis, rest in power. Ancestor Charmel Edwards, Rest in power. Ancestor Tanisha Anderson, rest in power. Ancestor Kendra James, rest in power. Remember, remember. Every single life is significant. Our right to breathe is legitimate. Who are you to judge? Who's worthy of love or cold blood? My sister's innocence. Her black life mattered, but she ended it. You are literate to the magnificence and scripted on her face. Put it, read the story of her greatness. Everyone she touched in all the places. Blink of an eye, you pull the trigger. Now just blankness and shameless. No penalty, no remedy, it's heinous. It was legal to enslave us, now it's legal to erase us. From slave ships to cages to peace, trained and racist. And now we have patience. If you see something, say something. If you see something, say something. I've seen a whole lot of blood on the hands of the state. So I'm saying something, do something, agitate. I have the nerve to suspect the system's depraved by design. Look who's on paid leave and look who's serving time. What's considered a casualty? What's an unforgivable crime? Blue acquitted for death. Black sentenced to life. Who decides who's dangerous enough to die? Who decides who's dangerous enough to die? Subsequent coincidence. The cops kill without consequence. Not convicted, plot depicted like an accident, belitted. All acquitted, all predicted. Law enforcement contradicted. Head once lifted. Black and gifted, beautiful and dangerous enough to die. This here is Earth, and we are chess pieces in a violence so systematical it's remarkable. When from the margins we grow dialectical, cause it don't matter if her name is Tarika or his name is Michael. Every 28 hours the police cars out their cycle from a history so rooted in hate. You can trace back the ones who found God in Sunday lynch and revivals. Survival has always been a covert operation. Survival has always been a covert operation. Seeking freedom has always been in chorus songs that move the congregation. Rooted in desperation, freedom is a map. Some past the master's wife's plantation. Divination foretold this moment right here in Union Square, right here, right now. So to the ones with an unwavering unrest, who saw no need for postponement, and carved out the blues from a pain so deep, it was a transatlantic hybrid of a mutation that wailed through jazz, found love in soul, sweated out through funk, kicked and burned through rock and roll until hip hop became the latest incarnation. The death of a people has never gone silent in the chambers of life. And we refuse to succumb to the heart-wrenching realization that the reality presented to us is worth inheriting or passing down to one more generation. We resist with both our hands. We persist with both our feet and follow constellations into the depth of this tumultuous sea. For we have always been guided. We will march through the streets and make beautiful things that leave imprints deeper than the pain that came before it. Call us alchemists, transforming the surface from all that got 
got buried beneath. We are seeds, call us committed, for liberation is the only air we can breathe. To destroy us, they'll have to annihilate our angels. We summon the strength of all those who came before us and all those coming. We must be freedom in our fingers when the world gives us nothing but believing a new day's coming. Thank you. And their leadership 
in our movements needs to be acknowledged and recognized, right? They teach us some of our best strategies around how we survive and how we, how we end violence or protect ourselves from violence. So let's celebrate. Let's celebrate all of our trans sisters. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Andrea Ritchie to come to the stage. So, as I said, we're not done. Tomorrow is a national day of action in remembrance of black women and girls who have been killed by police. There's going to be a number of actions that are happening around the city um, at 10 a.m. at the African burial grounds. Be coming together again at what's happening? At the African burial grounds, supposed to be gathering at 10 a.m. And I just really want to honor the leadership and vision of Charlene Carruthers and Black Youth Project 100, the national office and all the chapters around the country, in calling for this day of action tomorrow. We are here on the eve to remember that tomorrow we will be going out to act and to commit to continuing to act beyond tomorrow. So Black Youth Project 100 and Black Lives Matter are holding an event at 10 a.m. at the African Burial Grounds downtown. They will, Black Lives Matter will then be hosting um, folks in canvassing in Flatbush, and then we will be supporting the family of Pyam Livingston, who died in Brooklyn Central booking despite multiple requests for medical assistance as police officers sat by and waited and watched while she died. We will be marching tomorrow, as that family does every month on the 21st, and we will all be out supporting them. So come down to the African burial grounds tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., follow Say Her Name, Black Women matter and continue to act in the name of black women. Say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Who will hold Kayam Livingston? We will. Who will hold Kayam Livingston? We will. Who will hold Kayam Livingston? We will. And we will not forget. Thank you, family. Thank you for showing up for our sisters today. Thank you. Let me hear you. Let me hear your gratitude for yourselves and for each other. Again, today we remember tomorrow we act. And we continue to act. And we never forget. And our advocates are coming to the stage now to offer a small offering for our families. We're planting seeds. We're planting seeds. We're going to continue to grow this movement. So we're going to close by saying the names of our sisters once again. Are you with me? Yes. Miriam Carey, say her name. Miriam Carey. Michelle Cousseau, say her name. Michelle Cousseau. Kyla Moore, say her name. Kyla Moore. Rakia Boyd, say her name. Rakia Boyd. Chantel Davis, say her name. Chantel Davis. Shelly Frey, say her name. Shelly Frey. Alberta Scroll, say her name. Alberta Scroll. Tanisha Anderson, say her name. Tanisha Anderson. Want to thank all of our sponsors, all of the organizations that came together to make this day possible. I want to bring, um, is Kim? I'm going to bring Kim back to the stage. Kim Crenshaw? No? On behalf of the African American Policy Forum and all of our, all of our uh, partner organizations, I want to thank you for being here today. Again, today we remember, tomorrow we want to see you out on the streets, ready to act. Thanks.